welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The story to follow concerns a celebrity. A celebrity is a person who is famous in any way at all, though usually favorably. A person who is renowned, or sometimes only notorious. What happens when a famed, noted individual meets another one who is obscure and unknown? That is the subject of our drama, A Matter of Love and Death. Our mystery drama, A Matter of Love and Death, written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Lois Nettleton. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You know, I just thought of something. Yeah, what's that? Well, over 250,000 people have already bought 1976 Buicks. Yeah. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Well, if you got all those people together, they'd probably disagree on nearly everything. Religion, politics, sports. I mean, people disagree on all that stuff, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And yet all those people, over 250,000 of them, agree on Buicks. I think that's really socially significant, don't you? No. Buick. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. I can remember a day, perhaps some of you can too, when a man became a celebrity for a short while by sitting on a flagpole. Then there was a fetching celebrity named Willie Sutton who robbed banks because, as he said, that's where the money is. Most people felt rather badly when, after a long career, Willie was shot down near a police station. A tennis player named Gussie Moran became a celebrity because, though she played an excellent game, she caught public fancy by wearing ruffled panties underneath her tennis dress. Your guess is as good as mine as to what makes a celebrity. Well, I'm, uh, I'm checking out, Sarge. See you tomorrow. Oh, uh, could I see somebody, please? Uh, like who, miss? Uh, I don't know. Anybody. Well, try speaking to the sergeant. He'll help you. The sergeant? Sergeant Callahan at the desk over there. Oh. You want to see me, miss? I've, I've got to talk to somebody. Well, come right over here. Good night, Callahan. Good night. Now, well, what can I do for you, little lady? You, you don't remember me. Helen Collins? I don't think I do. I'm Mrs. James Collins. Jim Collins' wife? Oh, Mrs. Collins. Well, of course I remember you. You were here for questioning when your husband was... Uh, well, I, uh, I apologize, Mrs. Collins. You, you see, Detective Guthrie handled that whole unfortunate affair, and I... Well, what can I do for you, Mrs. Collins? I have to talk to somebody. I'm... I'm going crazy. Well, naturally, after what you've been through. Oh, you don't know. And your husband. A wonderful man. It's worse than that. Don't you have somebody at home you can talk to? Your mother. She's, uh, she's up in North Pines. That's in New Hampshire. Anyway, I can't talk to her about this. Some friend, maybe a girlfriend. I don't have any. Uh, well, Mrs. Collins... Why don't I take you into one of the back rooms here and give you some coffee? How would you like that? Yes, I'd I like that. Well, you just come along with me. Saints of life, you're shaking. Are you cold? I guess. Kind of shook up. Is that it? Mm. Right in here. Sit down, Mrs. Collins, and I'll fetch you some coffee. How do you take it? Uh, it doesn't matter. Well, I'll put some milk in it and a little sugar. Give you some energy. You look like you could use it. Am I right? I have to tell you something. And I'm going to listen. Now just sit back and relax and drink this coffee, and you tell me what's on your mind. Now take your time. I'm listening. How's the coffee? Sergeant. Uh, I, I forget what you said your last name is. Uh, Callahan. Is the coffee sweet enough? Sergeant Callahan. I should have told somebody before. A coffee too hot. I killed my husband. How's that again, Mrs. Collins? I killed my husband. Oh, well, now, and 
And uh, how did you do that, Mrs. Collins, if you care to tell me? Oh, I do, I do. That's why I'm here. Well, uh, drink some coffee. It'll settle your nerves. I shot him. Uh, that's a pretty serious thing you're telling me. Oh, I know that. And I know I should have told you before, but I've been so upset. I've been upset for a long time. Ever since... Oh, since... Oh, it goes a long way back. Well, you just tell me all about it. Start way back if you want to, or wherever you have a mind to. Okay. Yes, I'd like that. You're being very kind to me. Uh, that's what we're here for, Mrs. Collins. Well, you see, um, Jim and I grew up in the same town, North Pines, New Hampshire. I don't suppose you've ever heard of it. Well, I knew he came from New Hampshire, some town. Oh, a very small town. And we didn't exactly grow up together. I mean, I didn't really know him. He was older than me. Uh-huh. In, uh, in North Pines High School, he was a senior when I was a freshman. Of course, everybody knew him because he was such a great football player. Everybody just idolized him. He was the star. I used to go to all the games. Well, everybody did. And we'd cheer like crazy, and I'd cheer along with everybody else even though I didn't have the faintest notion what was going on down there in the field. But I'd scream and wave my pennant. I, I was really cheering for him, you know? Sure, I know. And, and sometimes after the big games, there'd be uh, parties, dances, and he'd be there and everybody crowding around him. He hardly got a minute to himself. And that's how I happened to meet him. Oh, me? Yeah, you. Come here. You want to dance with me? I want to get out of this cruddy crowd. Come on. Where to? Well, any place outside. Come on. Everybody will think I'm making out, but you don't care, do you? No. No, I don't care. Whatever you say. I didn't even know what he was talking about. I just knew that for some crazy reason, he had picked me. Me, of all people, to talk to. Well, we went outside and we talked. Anyway, he talked. Uh, I expect I'll go to Ohio State, maybe Stanford. I've got all kinds of offers. <laughs> I get a new one every day, practically. Oh, I just bet you do. Uh, you know, the scouts come around to all the colleges. Uh, senior year, they do. Scouts? Yeah, for the big teams. I expect I'll be drafted if uh, we can come to terms. Drafted? I didn't... I didn't know what he was talking about. But I didn't care. He was talking to me. Just as though I was somebody that mattered. Somebody worth talking to. Not many people had ever talked to me that way. And the last person in the world I expected to was Jim Collins. <laughs> you can imagine. Oh, sure I can. I never saw him again. Not to talk to. He went away to college, and the scouts did come after him, and they made him fantastic offers, and he was drafted. And after that, he belonged to them. And he started playing professional football, and he... Well, I guess you know all about that. Everybody does. He was just wonderful. Greatest running back ever lived. Of course, I read all about him in the papers. Every word. I, I was teaching kindergarten by then in the North Pines. I don't know if I was in love with him. I didn't think of myself that way. Or of him. But I would think of that evening with the orchestra playing I Don't Know How to Love Him. You remember that song? Oh, Sure. Well, that, that's kind of how it was. I couldn't think of myself as actually being in love. That was, well, it, it was beyond my wildest dreams. I just felt that for that one evening, somebody famous and great and, and exceptional had talked to me, told me about his plans, told them to me, of all people, me, you know? Sure. Uh, do you want some more coffee? And then this... Absolutely amazing thing happened. He came back to North Pines. The North Pines, that dinky little place. I mean, we didn't even have a library. That's how small North Pines is. 
course, he came back to see his parents, not to see me, naturally. And the whole town turned out. I mean, they, they put up banners, and they had a parade and music, and the mayor made a speech. Oh, the town really turned itself inside out and upside down. I, I, I hung around after everybody else went home. Jim stayed and talked to the mayor for a few minutes. And then they shook hands, and the mayor went one way, and Jim went another way. And there I was. He almost bumped into me. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, did I hurt you? Oh, no, 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 no. You, you didn't hurt me. I, I didn't hurt you, did I? Uh, you're too little. Well, <laughs> that was a silly thing to say. Hey, I know you, don't I? Mm, not really. From somewhere. I know, I know you from somewhere. High school? High school. Way back then? The big dance? Which big dance? Just before you went away to college? I took you to the big dance? I mean, you were my date? Oh, no. No, it was nothing like that. We just talked for a little while. We, we went outside and talked. Oh. Oh, you don't remember. No, there's no reason why you should remember. You just wanted to get away from the crowd, and I went with you. Well, I'd like to do that now. Hey, look. Have dinner with me, huh? Dinner? Yeah, dinner with me. How about it? You want to? What? Well, yes. Yes, I, I do. Yes, I'd love to. Jim was in town for just a few days. I had dinner at his family's house. I hardly remember that because, of course, his parents just hung on every word he said, and so did I. And when he came to my house, it was the same thing. He told the same stories he told at his family's house, and my parents loved them, and I loved hearing them again. I, I felt I felt like I was becoming a part of his life, hearing all those stories and all the famous names and everything, all so different from anything I'd ever known. Just like, like another world. Uh, you sure you want to hear all this? Yes, yes, I do. Well, you're not going to believe this part. Well, <laughs> try me. He fell in love with me. Yes, yes, Jim Collins fell in love with me. Now, why wouldn't I believe that? Well, because uh, you can see the kind of girl I am, and you know what he was. But he did. He fell in love with me. And he asked me to marry him. Actually, asked me to marry him. Oh, you want some more milk in that? More sugar? No, 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 this is fine. Well, he asked me to marry him, and what could I say? I said yes. <laughs> what else was there to say? Well, what about no? To Jim Collins? Say no to Jim Collins when he asked you to marry him? You loved him. Oh, of course I did. I mean, here I was, a kindergarten teacher in North Pines. Not very pretty, not unusual in any way. I thought I'd live my whole life in North Pines. Maybe be an old maid. Maybe die there. And then Jim Collins asked me to marry him. The great Jim Collins, the great football player. The greatest running back ever lived. Of course I said yes. And we got married right there in my parents' house. Because Jim had to leave the very next day. Our training starts day after tomorrow, Helen. It does? Yeah, for a month. Where do you go for the training? Westport, Connecticut. Well, we live in a house or an apartment. Oh, baby, it's only for a month. Ah, uh, a hotel. Well, I thought you might want to uh, stay on here with your folks. What for? I want to be with you. Kid, I'll be living in a dormitory. A dormitory? Yeah, with all the other jocks. You mean we can't live together? Not during training. Why not? We're married. Helen, those coaches are strict. They own us. They watch us like hawks. Now, you wouldn't like it, and even if they'd let you in, and they sure wouldn't let you in, not during training. Well, when do I get to see you? Well, after training, then for two months, there's exhibition games... Miami, Buffalo, all over. And I can go with you to those places? Well, you can meet me there, you know. You see, the players all go on chartered flights, and wives and sweethearts aren't allowed. 
But you can meet me. Huh? Chicago, St. Louis, Kansas City, all over. Two months of that. Don't worry, honey. We'll get together. Now and then. It wasn't easy, Sergeant Callahan. I don't suppose it was. I'd never heard of a life like that. The training, the practice games, the exhibition games. And then I think that was the worst of all. The banquet circuit. See, Jim made speeches at colleges. All over. Sometimes six speeches in one week. The last speech he made was right here in this town. At your college here. It was a little while after that speech that I killed him. Do you dream of becoming a celebrity yourself? Very well. If you have the talent and the perseverance and the audacity to launch yourself on this perilous path, good luck to you. If, on the other hand, you think such an undertaking requires too much of you and your main assets are your beauty, your charm, your femininity, then perhaps you think of marrying a celebrity. If this tale has any moral at all, any purpose, it is only the whispered warning, think again. I'll return shortly with Act Two. Jim Collins was a football hero at North Pines High School. He was a football star at college. He was drafted into the majors after graduation and became a football celebrity. On a visit to his hometown in New Hampshire, he encountered a girl he had talked to for ten minutes many years before at a high school dance. And uh, for this reason or that, he married her. When our first act ended, she was in a police station telling the sergeant that she had killed her famous husband. I didn't mean to kill him. I loved him. I hardly ever saw him, but I loved him. I never meant to do such a terrible thing, but I just... I don't know. I just got where I couldn't stand it anymore. I... Now try and calm down and tell me what... Well, what led up to everything... Well, you're a very nice girl. Anybody can see that. So, so tell me, what did he do to make you? Oh, you know. Well, there must have been a reason. No, not really. He was always good to me. He was a good man. But I... Will you want some more coffee? No, not really. Well, how about an aspirin? Oh, that would be nice. I've got some right here. I always carry some on me. Well, here you are. Yeah, take two. You want some water? No, no, the coffee's all right. Thank you. Now, let's both you and me relax, and you tell me the rest of it. Um, isn't somebody supposed to take down my confession? I thought you always did that. Well, there's always time for that later. You just tell me about Jim Collins and everything that happened. Well... Uh, I I could have put up with everything, I think. If it hadn't been for the fans. The fans? Mm. I've I've read about fans that follow movie stars around and, and uh, rock singers and those people. And, of course, I, I know senators and presidents have people like that, but that's mostly election years. But I never knew fans followed football players around. It came as quite a shock. I can imagine... There was one time, we were in New York. I, I'd never been to New York before, and Jim and I went into a big department store. I, I wanted to buy a purse, one of those over-the-shoulder things, you know. And um, we got up to the counter, and the sales girl took one look at him, and I thought she was going to faint. Uh, aren't you? You are. You're him. Aren't you him? Oh, it's him. It's, it's him. him. It's Mr. It's it's you, Let us get out of here. Oh, it's just fans, oh, honey. But they're crazy. No, it happens all the time. They're coming this way. Well, they want to touch me. Drop out an autograph, Mr. Collins. Drop out an autograph. 
I can't stand it. Hey, I can't stand it. Helen, Helen, wait a minute. It got where I was scared to go out with him. I mean, you don't know, Sergeant Callahan. People would see him on the street or in a restaurant or a movie, and, well, they just went crazy, Mr. Callahan. And nobody can tell me they loved him. I mean, lo- love should be gentle and kind and, and considerate. Don't you think so? I believe I do. Well, these people... They treated him like like he was some kind of a thing, like like they bought and paid for him, and they could do whatever they wanted to with him, like he belonged to them. I, I got so I, I wouldn't go out in the street with him. I I meet him at this bar, which was his favorite place to go, and I'd sit there with him, and uh, Bruiser would usually sit with us. A bruiser? Who's that? Oh, you don't know about Bruiser? Jim's bodyguard? Oh, oh, yeah, I know him. Only I didn't know that was what they called him. Well, it was what Jim called him. Uh, Bruiser was in college with him. He played football, too. Of course, he wasn't as good as Jim. Oh, no, not many were. Mm, and, and, and he wasn't what you'd call um, a student. And when he got out of school, he went into the Marines for a couple of years, and then he was in the, he was a security guard for a while... And then he met Jim, and, well, from then on, he was with him all the time. He, he was really very nice. And, of course, he was crazy about Jim, like everybody. Hey, look at this, Helen. What is it? Oh, cigarette case, isn't it? Yeah, and a lighter. Both solid gold. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, Jim, give them to me. Oh, that, that was nice. Oh, well, he didn't pay for them. I mean, somebody gave them to him, and he passed them on to me. Mm, Jim doesn't smoke. Yeah, they were presents. <laughs> From a lady. Really? Oh, no, no, don't get jealous. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, they were from a fan. His number one lady fan. She gives him presents? Expensive presents like that? Yeah, don't worry. He just passes them on to me. You see these cufflinks? Hmm? <laughs> They're from Gwen. To Jim. To me. Is that her name? Gwen? Yeah, Gwen something out of. She got it bad for old Jim. Oh, man. Here's a gold pencil she gave him. And there are other things. Why doesn't he give them back? Oh, he tried once, but she carried on like it busted her heart. It really cried and made a scene. So he stopped trying. He just gives his stuff to me. It doesn't seem right. <laughs> All part of the game, Helen. All part of being a celebrity. You'll get used to it. I never got used to it. Never. Bruiser and Jim would sit and laugh about it. But I never could. They talk about this Gwen person. They, they weren't even sure what she looked like because there were always so many fans crowding around Jim wherever he went. But he, he used to get a letter from her every single day. And finally, she sent him a picture of herself. Uh, what did she look like? Well, she was pretty. I... I was jealous, I have to admit that, Mr. Callahan. Oh, uh, uh should I call you Sergeant Callahan? You just call me whatever you want to. This is a very informal talk we're having. Well, she had lots of blonde hair. The thick, heavy kind, you know, down to her shoulders. And a beautiful smile. And very big eyes. And I guess, uh what you'd call a sexy mouth. She was... I guess you'd say she was beautiful. You'd think she'd get a man of her own instead of... Well, the picture upset you. Is that it? Well, I was already upset. Not just by her, by all of them. All the fans. They were just so... so wild, so uncontrolled, so kind of crazy. But your husband didn't mind. I think he liked it. Anyway, Bruiser had a gun. Oh, did he? And just in case things got rough, he said. Because things did get rough sometimes. People fought to get near Jim. And fights started, and uh, if Jim didn't do what they wanted him to, you know, spend enough time with them or hand out enough pictures or sign enough autographs, well, they'd get sore at him and make threats. Well, what kind of threats? Oh, 
like, uh, like they'd ruin him, like they hoped he'd lose a game, lose ten games in a row, break a leg. I mean, they, they'd get really angry. And I couldn't stand it. I mean, after all, he was a person. But he and Bruiser, they just laughed it off. Like the last letter he got from this Gwen person. What did the letter say? Do you remember? Most of it. See, we, we were sitting in this bar we used to go to, and Jim got it out, and he started to read it out loud. I, I know that wasn't very nice of him, but he always did it. Dearest, most adorable man in the whole world. <laughs> oh, how about that? Yeah. I saw you yesterday going into the barber shop, the big one where all the famous men go to. I worship you from afar, but my secret dream, which I shall now reveal to you, is to be near you, near enough to kneel at your feet and have your blessed hands touch my head. Come on now. <laughs> I, I received your picture, but it's not the one I want. You sent her a picture? Yeah, the PR office sends them out to everybody. It's nothing. Well, she didn't like the picture. I received the picture, but it's not the one I want. I want one that will be mine alone. The one you sent me says, Hi there, Jim, and that's not at all what I want. Because I am not like your other fans. I adore you, every part of you, if you know what I mean. You are my idol, my god, the avatar of my desire. Avatar? What's an avatar? Oh, who knows? You want to hear the rest of this? I don't. No? Well, it's just more of the same. Jim, I think you should tell her to stop writing to you. Stop hanging around all the time. Well, Helen, what's the harm? She's not hurting anybody. She's hurting me. Oh, is my little baby getting jealous, maybe? Oh, it's not that. It's just all so undignified. Well, what's a little dignity when you're a celebrity? It's so cheap. Hey, hey, look. Huh? Look at what? It's her. It's that dame, that, that Gwen Woozitz. Where? Oh, for Pete's sake. Well, she just walked in. Uh -uh. She's looking around. All right, all right, let her. You want her here. You want her to see you and come over here and spoil everything? Honey, what's the harm? She spotted you, Jim. So what? She's coming over here. Oh, she's a pathetic dame. Got something in her hand. Okay, let her have her fun. She has got something in her hand. Who cares? Well, hello. Hello there. Well, hello there to you, too. Uh... I was hoping you'd be alone. This is my friend, and this is my wife. Are there... You didn't answer my letter. Well, I've been pretty busy, you know. Oh, uh, well, you didn't send me a picture. Sure I did. Well, not the kind I asked you for. Now, look, I don't have any of those kind look, of pictures. Really. Well, you could have had one taken. All right, well, my manager wouldn't like it. Oh, uh, well, he wouldn't have had to know. And neither would my wife. Oh, well, in that case... Jim, look out. What? I have to have something. Hey, Woody, well, wait a minute. Something Woody. of my own. What, what is she doing? Get that... There. I got it. Something of my own to remember you by. So long, everybody. <laughs> what the... <laughs> oh, now that's a new one. She cut off a piece of my hair. How do you like that? Yeah, she's got nerve, all right. Yeah, she's got nerve. She's horrible. She's a horrible thing. Oh, come on now, honey. She didn't hurt me. A little lock of my hair. Let her have it. You don't even mind. You don't even get upset when somebody you don't even know treats you like that. As though she had rights to you. What? As though you were her servant. No, it's worse than that. Nobody would do anything so degrading to a servant, not even to a slave. Treat you like a pet, a dog, or a cat, and you don't even mind? You're a public pet. You gotta be in a zoo where people gape at you and feed you things and call you cute. You're in a great big zoo. The main attraction in a great big zoo, and you don't even mind. You love it. Do you still want to be a celebrity? You want to have your name in the newspapers? your picture in magazines, asked for your opinion on life and love? Do you want to be cheered by thousands and chased by hundreds and known intimately by almost no one? Do you really want to be a celebrity? I'll be back shortly with Act Three.
Our small-town kindergarten teacher has married the small-town boy who was a local football hero. But since the halcyon days of high school and high school football, he has become an outstanding football star for a professional team and increasingly popular, famous, and celebrated until he has reached the status of a national celebrity. All this is foreign to our heroine and distasteful. I screamed at him. You ought to be in a zoo where people can gape at you and see your peanuts and call you cute. You live in a great big zoo and you don't even mind. You love it. Oh, this, Mrs. Cullen, just because a silly woman snipped off a lock of your husband's hair. I mean, they weren't alone. You were with him, you and his bodyguard, and other people. You were in a public place, a restaurant, a bar, with other people around. I think that made it worse. Like he was on display. To be touched and handled by anybody at all. Well, that's better than having them alone together, isn't it? I don't know. I never thought about them being alone together. Because they never were. Are you sure about that? Oh, yes, yes, of course I'm sure. Jim wouldn't have wanted to be alone with her. He didn't even like her. And he didn't have time to be alone with her. He hardly had time to be alone with me. I, I tried to follow him to all the big games, and I'd, I'd wait in the hotel room for him. In the suite. We always had a beautiful suite. We were treated like royalty, practically. And one day, I came back to the hotel to wait for him. And I went into the bedroom to change my clothes. And there she was. This Gwen person. She was going through her clothes closet. What are you, what are you doing? Oh, you're his wife. What are you doing here? How'd you get in? Oh, now, please, don't be mad at me, Mrs. Collins. Who let you in here? Well, I told them, see, I was Jim's sister, and I had to meet him here. You, you don't mind, do you? Yes, I mind. I mind very much. Why are you going through our clothes? Well, I, uh, I had to have something. What? What, you want money or what? Money? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't need any money. Then what do you want? Well, something of his. Of what? Oh, you, uh... You gave him a lot of expensive presents. Do you want them back? Oh, no. He tried to give them back to me, see, but I wouldn't take them. I want him to have them. To carry them with him all the time. To touch them every day. He doesn't touch them every day. He gave them to a friend. Oh, he didn't. He wouldn't do that. His friend showed them to me. Well, I never, I never thought he'd do that. Well, he did. Do you think sneaking up to him and cutting off a piece of his hair was a nice thing to do? Well, I had to have something that was his. And that's why you're here now, to get something else of his? Yes. What did you take this time? Well, nothing much. You took something out of his clothes, didn't you? Well, yes, but it isn't anything. He won't even know. What it. is it? Well, it's not worth anything, only to me. You've got it in your hand, haven't you? Well, yes. Show it to me. Oh, please, let me keep it. Show it to me. Please, Mrs. Cullen. I'll call the manager. I'll call the police. No, 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 don't, don't do that. I, I'll show you. Here, see. You, you came here to get that? Yes. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Well, it's true. Let me keep it, please. Go away, will you? Just go away. Please, go away. Well, I, I, I can keep it. Go away. Just go away. Are you all right, Mrs. Collins? Yes, I think so. You feel like telling me what it was the young lady showed you? Lint. How's that again? It was lint. You know, the stuff... That collects in your pockets after you've worn your clothes a while. It's, uh, it's dust and bits of thread and little pieces of paper from gum wrappers. Just a, a mixed up collection of, uh, I don't know, anything. Lint. And that was all she'd come there for. That's what she said. That was all she'd taken. A crazy lady, a weirdo. That's what I told Bruiser. 
You told him about it. He came in pretty soon after Gwen left. I was kind of sorry for her, but I was scared of her, too. And I hoped I'd never see her again. I took a hot bath, and I laid down on the bed. And I wondered how I was going to go on with my life. Yes? Hello? Hello, Mr. Bruiser. Yes, Bruiser. What do you want? I'm downstairs. Is Jim with you? No, he's still watching the game. He look good. Can I come up? I've been following him around all day and I'm beat. Oh, yeah. Come on up. I need somebody to talk to. I'm your man. Be right up. Don't you see, Bruiser? It's like thousands and thousands of years ago when people were savages. When they, they, they drew pictures of animals in the dirt because they thought that would mean they'd find an animal and kill it. They thought it would work magic. I never heard anything like that. Bruiser, they shot arrows at the clouds to make it rain. That's nutty. It isn't any nuttier than shooting at presidents to start a revolution. Yeah, well, that's nutty, too. Th- th- there are tribes today where a girl follows a man and takes the dirt from the ground he's walked on, from his footprint. And she takes it home and plants a flower in it. And she's sure that when the flower grows and blossoms, the man will love her. Don't you see? It's all the same thing. It's superstition. It's craziness. Well, you couldn't grow a flower and a mess of lint out of somebody's pocket. Of course not. There's nothing you could do with it. So what does anybody want with it? But Gwen wanted it. She lied her way in here to get it. She was crying when she asked me, please, please, could she keep it? You could have her arrested. Oh, I don't want to have her arrested. I I just wanted her to get out of here. I want them all to get out. I want to have a life that isn't full of all this craziness. I can't bear it anymore. I, I just... I don't understand it, and I want it to stop. Why can't it? Because Jim's a celebrity. He just is. He couldn't stop being a celebrity even if he wanted to. And he doesn't want to. Well, would you want to? Give up all that money and have everybody look up to you and thinking you're marvelous and ask you to endorse things. Helen, baby, that's success. But can't Jim just play football? I mean, just do that without all this other business? Helen, you don't understand what kind of football player Jim is. It's not just that he's fast. And he's very fast, or, or that he handles his body like nobody else has ever done it before. Jim has, I don't know, uh, intuition. Uh, intuition, I guess you'd call it. Something goes on inside his head, a feeling for what to do. Maybe he's got a feeling for what everybody else on the field is going to do. He carries it all in his head. I don't even think he knows it's in his head, but it's there. It's mystical like. It's born in him. He's like clairvoyant, you know? I don't think I can stand it anymore, Bruiser. Maybe you oughtn't to be married to somebody like Jim. Because as long as he's a superstar like he is, people are going to follow him around and scream and yell and carry on. Of course, he won't always be a superstar or any kind of star at all. When will that be? Ten years, twelve, maybe more, probably less. (laughs) Who knows? I don't think I'll last that long. Look, I had a hard day today. Would you mind very much if I took a hot shower and laid down on the bed for half an hour, maybe? Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Helen. Give me your coat here. I'll hang it up. Thanks very much. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me take my little old thirty-eight out of the pocket. Don't want you handling it. Okay. Wait. You've got another gun. Oh, yeah, this. Is that a holster? What they call a holster? Yeah, that's what they call it. I wish you didn't have to carry guns. Never had to use one yet outside the Marines. Well, got to take my shower. Hey, I, I sure appreciate it. You're welcome. you be okay, won't you? Oh, sure. Hey, maybe you need a drink. No, no, I don't think so. I think I'm just going to sit here and try to figure out what to do with my life. And that's what I tried to do, Mr. Callahan. Oh, Sergeant. I just sat on the bed and tried to think how I'd gotten myself into such a mess. I thought of my life with Jim. No, no, not with him. Because I was hardly ever with him. I was married to him, but I wasn't with him except for a little while every now and then. The rest of the time, 
He was with the fans, the worshippers, the acolytes, the autograph hounds, the screamers, the people who thought they owned him, the people he'd given himself to. He wasn't mine. He was theirs. And then I heard the outside door open. Please. I love you. Now, wait, wait a minute. Hold oh, it. Please, let me come in with no, you. No, no, no. Let me touch you. you. Let me spend five minutes with you. Two no. minutes. Oh, you crazy woman. Oh, please, you don't know how I feel about you. You're my dream. My life. Now, look, will you get out of here? You're some kind of a nut. Oh, just let me be with you for a minute. Do you want me to have you thrown I out? Don't care. I don't care what you do. Only let me. Oh, you yeah. Helen, that's my wife, you oh, stupid please. fool. I don't... <laughs> Helen. Helen, I... <laughs> And that's how I came to shoot him, Sergeant Callahan. I don't remember picking up the gun. I don't even know which gun I picked up. I never had a gun in my hand before. But when I saw Jim and the girl, Gwen, and she was hanging on to him, pleading with him just to let her touch him. I don't, I don't know why I wanted to kill him. But I did. I wanted his kind of life to end. Maybe I should have killed her. Maybe that would have made more sense. I don't know. Neither one made any sense. No, I guess not. But what I wanted was... was for, for all to stop... All the craziness, all the screaming and yelling and grabbing for things. I wanted everything to just quiet down and be calm and peaceful. So that I could be calm and peaceful. And maybe a little happy. I understand. Do you? Really? I really do. Thank you. Mrs. Collins, you didn't kill your husband. Oh, but I did. The gun you had in your hand was never fired. But I heard the shots. Two shots. Uh, they came from a different gun. Oh, oh no, not Bruiser. No, he, he wouldn't. No, be... no, not from either of his guns. From a thirty-two, belonging to a very crazy lady. Gwen. We picked her up this morning. But she loved him. What a fan feels for a celebrity, Mrs. Collins. is a very mysterious thing. I don't know what it is, but I can tell you what it isn't. It isn't love. If you're interested in knowing what happened to Helen... She returned to the little town of North Fines, went back to teaching, and some years later married the manual training teacher, had three children, and a fair measure of happiness. And even the moments that were troubled or unhappy were not frantic or filled with any kind of excitement. Her days of being attached to a celebrity were over, and she never ceased to be thankful. I'll be back shortly. Our cast included Lois Nettleton, William Redfield, Marion Haley, and Lloyd Batista. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Carrier Air Conditioning. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Mystery Theater has been brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. 
The preceding program is furnished by CBS Radio. I'm Barry Farber. A lot of mysteries revolve around the telephone. Keep your radio fixed right where it is, because not mystery, but the history of the telephone will be our mission right here on the Barry Farber Show following the news on WOR New York. Reuben Hurricane Carter will be out on bail tomorrow. Missing melon heiresses reported held by their father on a state in West Virginia. President Ford calls for quick action on the Federal Election Commission. It's 61 degrees in cloudy mid-Manhattan. The man says unseasonably mild through Sunday. Mostly cloudy tonight with a low in the middle 40s. Sunny tomorrow with a high around 70. This is John Scott with the 8 o'clock edition of the news. Bail of $20,000 has been set for Reuben Hurricane Carter. Officials say the former middleweight boxer will be freed from New Jersey State Prison tomorrow. Carter's co-defendant, John Artis, was granted $15,000 bail and is also expected to be released tomorrow. The decision to grant bail followed a three-and-a-half-hour session between attorneys for the two men and Prosecutor Beryl Humphreys of New Jersey's Passaic County. Neither defendant was present in court in Patterson. The executive director of the Carter Artist National Defense Fund